Hey guys, Coach Casey here, and I am excited to talk to you today about one of the uh, most important and most exciting things you can do. Well, I don't know if I'd call it exciting, but it's probably one of the most important things you can do as a runner and probably the easiest thing you can do as a runner to improve your performance in a relatively short period of time. And it doesn't require any, really any extra mileage or any extra blood, sweat, and tears. But uh, as I have learned in coaching people and talking with fellow runners, this is something that very few people actually take advantage of. And that is uh, creating and keeping track of a running journal. Uh, this sounds, uh, before you click off and stop <laughs> watching, uh, let me just say this is, again, uh, reiterate that what I have seen is that as runners begin to keep a running journal, this becomes a huge game changer for them. Uh, so what I want to cover today is about three reasons why you should keep a running journal, and then also uh, several, maybe three, five, six, seven reason, uh, ways how you can keep a running journal. So the first reason why you should keep a running journal is that it just it speaks to the uh, there's there's a lot of science out there and proof that in creating a new habit or um, creating a positive habit one of the easiest and surefire ways to do that is to uh, to write it down or to have some kind of milestone or marker that shows completion of that new habit uh, it creates kind of a positive habit habit cycle loop uh, so as you do your run and you come back and you physically write down that you did five miles, it took you 45 minutes to do it, it gives you a greater sense of completion and it kind of, uh, in even uh, some research has shown that it will um, raise that sense of well-being or serotonin or that runner's high by uh, writing and noting what you have completed, uh, which again, that, that creates the habit cycle so that you're more likely to go back out and do it again. Now, um, how we go about doing this is uh, is actually pretty. It's it, it feels simple, but uh, I know that some folks they'll they'll take their watch. I'm um, looking at my watch right here, and they'll just plug it into their computer and they'll download it automatically to Strava or Map My Run, Runkeeper, a lot of great services out there that keep track of your mileage. However, I would say that if you're trying to go for that habit formation thing, uh, having it be automated is just not going to be the same. Uh, it, it's not the same as actually physically writing down what you did or typing it into your computer onto some sort of spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, just putting it and, you know, kind of plugging it into your computer. It, it's, it's nice, it's convenient, but it's not going to help the habit formation part in the same way. The second reason why uh, we should keep a writing journal, and this is where it really starts to help uh, your, uh, just be able to, it helps uh, you get faster in a healthier way and even maybe a little bit more injury free is that you track progression and you're also tracking uh, the difficulties, the difficult types of runs you have and then perhaps even the runs that you're really good at. Uh, so if I, if I just give you an example, uh, there's a particular athlete that I work with and uh, we've done, we've trained for a few different marathons together, I've coached her through a few different ones. And what we've noticed is that the type of workout, as she's kept her running journal really well, we've noticed that the type of workouts that will really prepare her best, give her the most confidence, and also kind of fine tunes her body for the marathon distance is a threshold workout, which is a, a particular type of workout that it's about around 10K to half marathon pace. And what we've learned is that as she does those, uh, her body responds really well so that when she goes back to marathon pace, that marathon pace will feel easier and it gives her confidence going into the marathon. And so now as she's going into a marathon, five weeks out, I have a progression of three different types of threshold workouts that are going to really boost that confidence and fine tune her body. But you know, that's her. Different runners will have different responses to different types of workouts. We would not have come across that um, discovery had she not kept a running journal and we weren't be able to discover that these are the types of workouts that best prepare her. Uh, so how, how you can go about doing this is that Literally after after every run, I would suggest that you come home and you write down what you did. I probably wouldn't get into a lot of reporting about how you felt about a particular workout or describing the workout itself. Um, that, because what I'd like to be able to do with a running journal, here's um, kind of a picture of mine. And this, uh, I look, and you see these very tiny boxes. I just like to note um, the mileage I did, how long it took me to do it. And then if I have a particular workout, like say, three times one mile at threshold pace, I make a note of what my average pace was. So it might say eight miles, um, an hour and five minutes and three miles at threshold. And then I'll write down AVG, um, 
615. And so uh, that just gives me a quick snapshot so that I can quickly scan through my running journal and find the information that I'm looking for. And then the other way that we can go about doing it, how we can go about doing this is I like to have a bigger um, section here at the end of every week where that's where I like to note how I felt during a particular week. I also note there if there's a particular niggle or pain that popped up along the way. Uh, and then that's also where I might write down the total miles. So if I, on each day, if I'm writing down, you know, eight miles, uh, an hour and five minutes, and then I'm adding those up along the, the side, and I'm going to write down exactly how many miles I did for the entire week. Uh, that's so that as I look through an entire plan, I can see the type of mileage that I'm averaging, which actually becomes important um, as a coach. And then also, if you're trying to coach yourself, you'll begin to notice that you you actually that you probably have a uh, a comfort zone and then a a place that's going to feel like a stretch where you actually begin to grow and then maybe a red zone where you begin to experience more pain um, more injuries more little nagging problems start to pop up and so what that means then is that as you um, plan out your training calendar you realize that boy if I go up to 50 miles. I know I'm going to start to experience pain. It doesn't mean that you necessarily don't do 50, but what it means is that you're much more cognizant and aware of what happens when you get to 50. So it's like, I really need to get some rest. I need to spend some more, spend some more time with my foam roller. Uh, you know, you're just starting, you're aware that as you're doing that, you need to take better care of yourself. Uh, and so that, that, that um, so that um, diminishes the chance of injury. And so then as you diminish injury, you'll be able to run more consistently over a longer period of time. Um, and so then you get faster. Uh, you notice that on my particular um, running journal, I have um, different colors and boxes um, colored in. And so I'll just hold this up real quickly. And what, you, what I like to do this is because then I can do a quick glance at my journal and see the green boxes are workouts that I did. There was nothing special about them, just went out there, got it done. The ones highlighted are highlighted in yellow, so like these here, are workouts that I did and I did really well at. So um, those might be workouts where I did better than I thought I would, I felt better than I thought I would, I, you know, it was just kind of the, the sun was shining, the birds were singing, and I was running fast. Those were awesome days. The ones that are red, you know, so there's about one, two, three, four of these on here. Those are notes of where I may have been experiencing like a cold or an illness or even some kind of injury or pain. So I know like up here at the very top, I had just done a race at the beginning of this week here. And then I went out and tried to do a bunch of mileage and I had an old foot pain that popped up here and I made a note and it, I... I noted it here with the color, and then I noted it here at the end of the week that uh, there was a little foot pain that, that popped up in the middle of the week. Um, and then here, the ones that are highlighted, you notice they're colored in yellow. Not the highlighted yellow, but they're just colored in yellow. Those are workouts that I struggled in. And so those happen a lot more often. You know, I'm sure a lot of us experience these in the middle of extreme heat or extreme cold. And then if I just drew a red a red square around them, that means that they, they actually didn't go well at all. So those were workouts that I had a really difficult time with. Um, maybe I didn't hit my pace or some kind of pain popped up. Something just was not good about those workouts. And again, I note that at the end of the week um, so that I can remember that along the way about why that particular color is, um, is highlighted that way. So let me uh, just continue on here and give you one more good reason why uh, you should do this. And this is actually probably one of the biggest benefits of keeping a running journal. And it is, it is a huge confidence builder. Uh, a training cycle is a roller coaster. And you can see that with mine. You know, the, there's, you know, there's different highlights, different colors. And it's just, and it's easy to, you know, a type A personalities, it's very easy for us to just remember the last workout that was maybe the worst workout because we're, we're um, super perfectionistic. And so our minds just kind of dwell on that workout that felt like it was a little bit less than um, desirable or was not exactly what you wanted to do. So we just kind of think on that workout. And this reminds me that there have actually been a whole lot of workouts that I have done super well. And that is a great confidence builder. Um, this is actually my entire, uh, my entire marathon planning cycle for 2017. And so I have one more week that is blank. And then this next weekend, I'll be running the Chicago Marathon. And so I've spent some time this week as I've begun my taper and peaking for this marathon 
to actually um, reflecting on all these different types of workouts. And it's been a big confidence builder, I remember, and to even see like, man, at the beginning of the season, I was only doing um, marathon pace at this. And then it, and I'd be able to watch my progress and see how it has gradually gotten better over the season. Or just to even look back and say, like, wow, there's a lot of highlighted yellow boxes um, along the way. Um, so these are, these are all things that are going to build your confidence um, week in, week out, and then even better at the end of the season. Um, and then lastly, uh, what, one of the things that this, you know, and besides being a confidence builder, it gives us confidence in the pace that we choose for a particular race. So at, so as athletes come to me, or as I'm even looking at what my own pacing strategy should be for my marathon, first thing I want to do is I want to look at their running journal and see what types of, how, you know, how have they been performing in particular types of runs. So as I, as I give a pacing strategy for myself or other runners, I can have um, total confidence in looking at their workouts and saying, well, according to your workouts, this is actually a very, this is a very conservative pacing strategy. And here's a pacing strategy that would be a push. And so then we can formulate a pacing strategy. It's not a bunch of guesswork or wishful thinking, but it's based on the solid facts of their journal. Uh, and then very last thing, if you're going for extra credit, and I, I've just, I started doing this um, years ago, and that is at the, at the end of kind of the big goal race of the season, I'll write kind of a race summary or a race report for myself of a particular race. And I started doing this because I had a series of marathons where I would just experience a lot of GI distress um, in the midst of the marathon and even some half marathons. I'll just leave that to your imagination of what that means, but it wasn't pleasant. And then finally, I, I kept playing with it and kept, kept tweaking it and it was getting better. Getting, and then finally, I had a race where it just nailed it. There was no problems. There was no GI distress. Felt great in my belly. Had the energy I needed. And so then I thought, I'm going to forget this. I got to write it down. And so then I started writing that down. I thought, you know, there's other things about the course that I could probably write down too. So if I ever want to do this marathon again, I can remember it. So now after every marathon, and I've got a bunch of these race reports on, on different races and marathons and half marathons I've done where I, I write down the 48 hours before I race, you know, this is all the food I ate. And that is generally now it's always the same thing because I know that that's what's going to work for me um, because I've written it down. And then also on that race report, I might include um, things about, uh, you know, if, were there any hassles or headaches that I need to remember if I do this race again, how I can get to the starting line most effectively. Uh, were there landmarks along the course that I want to remember so the next time I do it, I can remember that landmark for a particular reason or for um, if I want to you know, kick it in gear, what, whatever. So these are just, um, it's kind of like a time capsule that I'm giving to myself. And that really is what your running journal is. You're creating a time capsule that you be able to refer back to in future scenarios and um, what you can do. So this is uh, keeping a running journal, again, is going to be the biggest game changer. It's the easiest thing you can do to begin to um, improve your performance. And it's also going to help build that positive habit of, of getting out there and running frequently and feeling a great sense of satisfaction as you do it. So enjoy uh, your fall racing calendar. Enjoy the races you have coming up and enjoy the training along the way. The process is definitely uh, the greatest reward. It's during the process. It's, um, I just remind myself it's during the process that we earn those medals. We earn those t-shirts. Um, we earn those goofy bumper stickers. So enjoy the process. And the running journal hopefully will help you do that even better. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.